All right, it's time for some cutting and some welding. Using cardboard aided design or CAD, I'm going to make a template of the piece that I need to weld in place here. Like so, I'm good with that. Could be a little bit shorter even, but we'll fine tune that. I'm gonna do that top cut right about there. Beautiful, and for now, a little tight right there. Cardboard aided design at its finest. Now, I can use that to cut out this, and then I can clean this up and weld away. Beautiful. All right, let's clean that up. There we go. Now what if I can cut this with some shears? This is original German metal, so it might be a little bit stout for these shears, but we'll try. Ah, nice, we got it. I think that's doable. Tight down there, but I was expecting that on that corner. If that corner's ever so slightly out of shape. Yeah, and yeah, I could have ground that out more. Hopefully I can get enough material on there and fill it. My experience with rust is a lot of times when you start welding on rust, this stuff will start to crumble back. It's not fun to chase it, but we'll see what we can do. And actually, I might end up putting a small piece of backer and just tacking it in place. It's kind of a lip to hold that in place. So let's do that. That'll help solve that up. Oh, and note that I did put a new fresh air hose in place. I actually got the T in place, so that's all good to go there. Before I do anything, I'm actually going to get my, mach my welder set on this piece of sheet metal right here so that I know what to expect as far as uh, the temperature and wire speed for this thickness of metal. Clamp them together, and I'll use the chart on my welder. I'm using 023 slash 024. Shielding gas is 75 argon, 25% carbon dioxide. 024, I'm doing, it's basically one mil thickness on this, guys. All right, so roughly 20 gauge with 024. I wanna be two and a half on my heat, 50 on my wire speed. I wanna use that as a starting point to get my machine dialed in for welding on this sheet metal. So let's give that a try, see how it goes. Since I'm gonna be welding vertically, I wanna kind of get an idea of how this is gonna feel vertically. And this thing shielding or not? Oh, minimum delay, shade. Now that I'm blind, I want high sensitivity. Let's still max that guy out. Let's try that. Is this thing even on weld? Grind, cut, weld, weld. Because uh, it's getting pretty bright for me. So the first couple tacks are pretty good as far as the heat range. I think I'm turning it down just a touch. And my wire is getting pretty heavy. So I'm going to turn my wire down a little as well. Let me give that a try. There we go. I'm happier with that versus everything else. You can see how high the welds are versus that one's a little bit flatter. And on the back side, we've got good fill. And those are really heavy right there. So I think I like that. I can't see because my eyes are brightened. So I'm going to tack that or hit that down with flat wheel. That'll do. Now test fit that guy. Good. Good. Even up that gap there. Hit this with a little bit of primer. being dark enough, which doesn't sit in place, but if it gets dark, it'll save my eyes. It's kind of 
battery. I wonder if the battery's dead. Hold, please. Now I've got a, a battery for my welding helmet. I haven't used this in quite some time. So now it actually gets dark. Oh, shoot, I need glasses. Otherwise, I'm definitely not going to be able to see. Uh, it will probably be too dark to begin with, but at least now I'll probably be able to see what I'm welding without going blind. Novel concept. I need to get that corner in and then I can bend that over. Let's uh, see how she does now that I can actually see. Middle knob, down, there we go. All right, that's better. See if I can do about that. Takes care of that hole. I'm just going to start knocking some of this down across the bottom, let it cool down across the top. And this is a cutting wheel, not a grinding wheel, but I just want to get really precise on these areas with the high spots. Hardly even noticeable. All right. I'm going to try and fill those guys in and then grind those down and then hit it with the flat wheel and call that one good. Might look worse than she is and you can see some weld lines back in that, but like I said, I'm going to come in with the flat wheel, smooth that out as best as possible, hit up as a primer and that's all metal, all repaired, no more holes. Yes, I welded it and I grinded it. I don't know if that makes me a welder or a grinder, but either way, I, I, I just work on cars for fun, guys. What do you want from me? I like a cutoff wheel for cutting off the heads of welds because that's a heck of a lot more precise than that big old pad of all that area. So I can really concentrate on cutting down just the top of the weld and not the entire area around it like this thing does. So I'm going to go through and smooth this all out and it will be almost as good as new. Not too shabby, huh? If you wanted to be super, super picky, uh, some high build primer, just the thinnest cut of filler, and that could be smoothed out to look just as good as new. But for me, this ain't no show car. Not yet, anyway. So, a little bit of primer, that's good enough for me. No more hole in our A pillar. All right, for my next trick, I'm gonna work on that. Now, obviously, it's a little bit harder to get a grinder and stuff in here, so. Welding on this might be a little bit more difficult. Let's try and cut out some of this stuff. Bend that, bend that. So that sits in there. And then I can just cut my length here to fit over the top of that. And just lay it on top. There we go. Yeah. Let that stuff work for a little bit. I'll work on this. Nice. Not too shabby. I'd say we're looking pretty darn good. Just gotta roll that out to match that fender well right there a little bit better. Not to get much with that, but we'll try. Now, honestly, there's not a whole lot of metal here, but fortunately, this is on the inside and it's going to be covered with carpet anyway. And you know what? I'm going to cut that line right there. I like that. And I think I'm going to do the same thing across that top edge there. Let's give that a buzz. 
see what she does. That's about as good as I can do. I'm gonna blow it out, spray it some core seal. It's gonna turn nice and black and primer itself, so it'll be good to go. Now I'm going to get a paintbrush and just brush it all around. Shoot. Okay, you can hardly tell that was welded up down there now, can you? All right, well, guess what we get to work on now? Clutch cable brace. Yay. All right, so two little strips. One to go from the bottom and come up and then one to go from inside the tunnel and over the top that way. And I think that will do relatively nicely. As long as I can get a good weld on the inside of this tunnel, we'll see how it goes. Ah, uh, sorry guys. Totally knocked that thing out of the way. It ain't the prettiest thing in the world. It's still smoking. It ain't pretty, but it's not going anywhere. No more. That clutch cable is now held securely. Now that clutch cable has always been secure. Now the clutch cable tube is now really secure. All right, well, it ain't pretty, but it's not going anywhere. Unfortunately, obviously I took the pedal assembly out yesterday, so I can't verify that it works, but guess what? I got a hole in the tunnel. If I need to uh, go back and redo something else, it's getting late in the day, about 2.40, which means I got a lot of cleanup to do before tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna start cutting out some floor pans uh, and on that video or actually I'm gonna call it videos because I'm gonna bring our regular camera guy in so that we can cover this uh, more in depth uh, we haven't ever done a body on floor pan video and I feel like that's something that you guys definitely need to watch uh, or definitely would want to watch anyway so I'll cover it a little bit in the vlog but we're gonna have a definitely a much more in-depth how to do body on floor pan replacement, uh, which I think is gonna be very helpful for a lot of you guys out there doing work in your own shop at home. So until then guys, uh, I'm not Don Fanucci. I have the black fingers, not the black hand. I'm gonna cut out some floor pans and put some new floor pans in. This is a driver's side floor pan. What we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do, is cut along this seam and along this seam all the way down to the back rear cross member and then i'll cut there right here where we have the pedal assembly we need to be very cautious because we actually have the brake line coming around we don't want to cut that brake line through so i'll be very cautious with my cutoff wheel along here and along here and then right here i'll actually come in and cut all the way up to the heater channel through the floor pan so that's the process of doing this with the body on. Other than that small little corner right there, which is now broken free, our floor pan is cut along the inside lip, all the way along the tunnel, all the way along the rear cross member, all the way down into there underneath. I'll show you what it looks like here. We've got the floor pan cut to right here, but not through to this edge yet, because we've got this reinforcement washer in place. All the way across and all the way along the tunnel, all the way to the front of the car, and all the way out through the floor pan there and through the floor pan there, but not cut right there yet. We're gonna cut that once we get everything unbolted, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts. We'll get all those unbolted. And then this floor pan will almost be ready to drop. We just got to cut that small section at the front and that small section there at the back. And then this floor pan will be completely free. freedom. We no longer have a floor pan in place. So once the floor pan was unbolted, you can kind of pry the floor pan down and cut through this last section right here on this side 
without getting into the heater channel. And then once this entire floor pan side is dropped down, you can just rip and tear the floor pan from right there. But now I'm going to go in here and chip out and peel out all of this original lip that's still inside the tunnel from the old floor pan. Now, honestly, is this necessary? No, you could just come in and lay the new floor pan up on top of it. Then if you can look from the bottom side and it's going to be three layers instead of two layers. And uh, that's just not the way to do it. So let's do it properly. Let's peel this guy out of place, but I'm going to get all these brake line tabs right up like I had these two already. Pull the brake line up and out of the way. And I'm going to get to working on that lip all the way around. All the remnants of the old floor pan is now busted out, peeled back, hammered off, scraped off, all the way down and underneath to there. We'll clean up any of these rough spot welds, clean up all the dirt and debris. Um, we'll give it a little shot of Cora Seal, uh, and then we'll clean up our messy, messy floor, and we'll prep for a new floor pan. New heavy-duty floor pan is bolted in place, but not quite welded in place, so I'm going to get to work on that now. One new heavy-duty floor pan compared to one old original floor pan. I think the new one looks a little bit more stout, right? Yeah. Down below, everything's back in place. Overlapped. Overlap that tunnel piece all the way across the back. Butted up and slightly overlapped on that front seam and sitting inside the pan all along the tunnel. So we are ready to go with one side floor pan just about installed. Not sealed, but at least she's installed. And well, now it needs to be welded. So I'm gonna get to that. Floor pan is welded in place, at least on the left-hand side. And I just gave everything a nice coating of core seal, but all the way inside there is seam welded. Seam welded in that corner. And then spot welded about every inch to inch and a half. Even down inside there, which is a nice pain in the butt to get to. And uh, all the way along there. Seam welded in the back. Spot welded all the way down to the side. A new. Heavy duty floor pan. And even though I hate running these, I put it on just so you guys can see what it looks like. and. That's in place. Once I get that side done, I'll get some seam sealer and seal the edges here, all the way along here, underneath the bottom and that corner there, and same thing at the back. But she's good to go, guys, on one side. Tomorrow I'm going to do the other side. I'm not going to bother to bring in the cameras along. Uh, it's just a lot quicker to just do the work than it is to film and stop and explain and sorry guys um i might just set up a tripod and you guys can just watch or maybe i'll do an overhead view i'm like up here i don't know if i can hold the camera up and then you guys can just see all the work from up here that might be pretty cool maybe i'll do that
So that's going to do it for this video. Catch you guys on the next segments, which at this point, I don't know. I imagine it's probably going to be putting the pedal assembly back in, slapping a steering wheel back on, putting a seat in, and then finally, finally going for that first drive, albeit it'll only be around the parking lot because we don't have registration and insurance on this car yet. But that'll be coming soon, hopefully. Until then, later guys.